You are listening to the Horse Radio Network, part of the Equine Network family. What a beautiful day for horses in the morning. You are listening to the number one horse podcast in the world. Here's your entertaining look at the horse world and the people in it. I'm Dr. Allison Marshall. And I'm Dr. John Langlois. And you are listening to the special monthly Chi University episode of Horses in the Morning on the Horse Radio Network for September 24th. Good morning, horse world. Welcome to our once a month look at traditional Chinese veterinary medicine with the Chi University. Hi, John. How's it going way down there in Florida? Uh, damp and wet <laughs> and warm. <laughs> ah, nice to know some things don't change, right? That's right. <laughs> it doesn't change its spots. Yeah, we expect yeah. it this time, but we've had an exceptional amount of rain last week, but um, I, I welcome the rain. Good. Well, Virginia has been beautiful. This is, I love living in the middle Atlantic because the saddle seasons, as they say, are so beautiful and fall is long and it's been, I say cool nights. It's been down into the sixties and fifties and the highs are sort of 80 degrees and the horses love the weather and the riders love the weather. And I love being a mobile veterinarian at any point in time in my life. Cause I love being outside more than most people, but it's Me too. beautiful. Yeah. Yep. Me too. And we have a special so, guest today, yes? Yeah, why don't you tell us about Mariana? Well, Mariana is a special person. I met her several years ago when she was taking some classes at the Chi, and she was my student, and she was always, you know, one of those A-type students asking questions that uh, occasionally I had to say, oh, 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 okay, I'll get right back to you. Right. But in any event, she was a model student. I got to know her personally. I actually last year made a special talk at her graduation because I felt I just she was a special person, all things considered. She put her heart and soul into learning TCVM. She became, you know, everyone's favorite and offered herself sure. up in most times. So she she was a gem and I was excited to know that she would be a part of today's podcast. She is everyone's favorite. I have to say, you know, just getting to know her through visiting at Chi and we did some recordings down there off and on over and above. I did some recordings over and above the teaching and she is a special person and she just has such a generous spirit. So I was thrilled to have her on today too. So yeah. Mariana, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, John, because I might be, but Mariana is a Peruvian by nature and yes. she she learned acupuncture in Peru, and then she came to Chi University, I think, to study further, and then decided to stay on for a master's. Um, I, and and is that right? No, she yes, stayed on. Uh, yeah, okay. She Great she did stay on as an intern for Dr. Shea for one year, and during that time, completed her master's degree. Super. And so we're. I'm. I won't uh, spoil the surprise, but talking with Mariana today, we're going to find out a lot about what she did at Chi University some of the ins and outs and the inter interesting things that she was working on as an intern that she got to be there all day, every day. You know, those of us who teach can kind of go in and out a little bit, but she was there not only for one year, I think she did her internship for one year and then both she and Dr. Shea loved each other so much that they let her stay on for a second year and finish a lot of the work. So excited yeah. to talk to her today. Correct. And yeah, and it's, in it's going to be interesting, you know, to learn a little bit more about, you know, even though it may be, kind of the intricacies of some of the herbs and some of the biopharmaceutical part of those herbs. But we're all trying to learn from a scientific way how these herbs actually work so that we can better understand going forward. So I'm, I'm excited to hear more about that. Awesome. Well, let's bring on Mariana. Wonderful. Hey, Mariana, we're so happy to have you today. We're so excited to bring you on because not only do you have all kinds of experience working at Chi University, but you've also just finished an internship with an illustrious veterinarian, Dr. Carol Holland in South Florida, working on sport horses. And we really kind of want to hear about your experience with that too. But so welcome. Nice to have you. 
Hi, thank you for having me. <laughs> so for all the audience, I met Mariana because I am one of the teachers at Chi, obviously. And Mariana, while she was doing an internship with Dr. Shea at Chi University, she got to teach with us and Mariana and I just hit it off and she got to take me to a, she's from Peru originally and she got to take me to a, an authentic Peruvian restaurant in Gainesville, Florida, <laughs> which I thoroughly enjoyed because I love eating different ethnic foods, right? It kind of is a great taste of a country, even though you can't visit there. So, so thank you for that, Mariana. So tell us a little bit, like, how did you apply? So you became a veterinarian in Peru and did you get your acupuncture training elsewhere or did you come to Chi for acupuncture training and then you decided to stay and, and stay on in an internship? How did all that work? So I was in vet school last year and in Peru, in order to get your degree, you need to do a thesis. And I was doing my thesis on comparing PRP and electroacupuncture tendon healing in racehorses, which I will be presenting now in the conference this September. Finally, Fabulous. the paper is ready. We found yeah. that PRP and acupuncture has the same recovery time with ultrasound evaluation. So oh, while, I, while I was doing that, I was struggling a lot because there's a lot of information online and I needed kind of a better guidance how to do it. Somehow, Chi decided to open in Chi, Chi Peru. And I got to learn everything from acupuncture and TCVM, mostly. Dr. Shea came to Peru. He visited. He had pisco sour and great food, too, of course. Just what he that is said. so cool. <laughs> and then great teacher, Dr. Antonio Alfaro came. He was my TA. And I learned a lot. And then I opened my practice in, here in Peru. It was only rehab and acupuncture. And then the opportunity of going to Chi came up doing the master's degree for, with a full scholarship. So I felt like I needed to learn more. So, uh, so I, went, I went to Chi. And then it was a two-year program where I had to do research. We did a lot of research. We worked yeah. cells and we were, and I believe the lab was working on the effect of one of our famous herbs for cancer treatments, and they were seeing the effects on a cellular level. And in while I was doing that, well, I, I was also doing my internship with Dr. Shea. And well, we saw plenty of cases and it was, it was, it was a really great, great experience. And so am I correct in, in thinking that that was a two-year degree or you stayed for two years or was it just one? Yes. Two years. Okay. That's what I thought. So that's super cool. I, I had somehow forgotten that you had started your own practice already in Peru and then left it to come to Chi. So why don't you talk a little bit about the research you guys were doing? So the herbal formula that you're talking about is Wei Chi Booster, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Correct. Yes. And I believe we're still, they're still working on that. It's going to be a long process, but we use it a lot in practice for small animals and in horses too. We use Wei Chi Booster to help the immune system to work, to help the, all these uh, diseases. But then they, what they, we were doing, we were feeding basically the cells, the herbal formula. And we, the preliminary studies were showing that only the, but we'll call it the bad cells, right? The cancer cells would die after being fed this formula, but normal cell lines would still uh, proliferate with no problem, which is a huge discovery, especially with cancer treatments, because usually what they do is they target both good and bad cells, and that's when you get all these side effects too. So we were doing these at the lab. This is a brand new facility that she opened last year at the uh, in Reddick. Yeah, all these herbal formulas actually, it's like they're scientifically proving their actions. Even though Correct. we know they help with cancer, we've used them for dogs and horses and cats and, and people and all that sort of thing. Because a lot of Dr. Shea's formulas are based on very ancient formulas from China. But it's so cool to hear how Qi University is... I would say trying to prove it to the Western world that they work 
And like, it's the way that they try to prove it to the Western world is you have to do scientific experiments so that we understand it in a scientific way because they understand these herbs from an energetic way, right? I mean, Chinese medicine doesn't question the fact that they work. Correct. Um, and if we think about it, most of the take today came from plants, right? Came from plants, sure. came from, yes. and then they were work on the lab and then you get the pills and, and all these medication. But now that's kind of why I believe that she wants to do as well is trying to refine these formulas, prove them scientifically, and then have a better approach to treating diseases, which is huge. It is huge. I mean, you know, I think everybody knows, I'm just speaking to our listeners here, but everybody knows that pen penicillin started from bread mold. So the, uh, and, and what I have learned, and I don't know the, I don't know, I wish, you know, I will, I will never know about herbs as much as Dr. Shea did at six years old in his little finger. Like there's just so much to know because there's so much plant material in the world. But to investigate some of that, I do think that somehow the plants tend to be and in whatever all that you know i know sometimes they will use other rocks minerals shells very rarely animals body parts or something like that but it's so cool how they seem to be selective for rebalancing the body and not just annihilating all of our cells like our chemotherapy you know it's Absolutely. just mind-boggling to me really exactly what you said is that the 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 plants had selected for just the cancer cells and killed just the cancer cells. That's just, that's just amazing to me. So, so Mariana, how, what is what, like, how do they test these herbal formulas? If I seem to remember there's, and this is probably too technical and most people don't care about it, but I'm one of those nerdy kind of people. Weren't they using like electron microscopy or something to like tech test almost the energy behind the herbs as well? I seem to remember when I took a tour of your lab, something like yes. that. Yes, yeah, so the lab has these really high tech technology. Really, they do have electronic microscope that can take. You know, when well, I mean, a lot of people remember when they went to these. To they had the science class, and you had these microscope, and you have to adjust the, to be able to focus and see the cell. Well, these the new microscopes, they do it all by themselves. It's really high technology. They can take all the pictures and you can see and they can count what cells have like the normal shape that they should have and the ones that are kind of dying, they change shapes and things like that. So that's one of the things that we see. So basically the whole process is you have the cells, like think about like having a, the, they, they're just in, let's say like water, the cells can live in water and you feed them like you would feed fishes. You just put the, uh, That's so cool. <laughs> you just put the herb, right? Obviously in a dose that will be for the cell. And then wow. you just wait and see what happens. We wait like around three days and then we are taking pictures of them with the microscope to see how they're doing. And then the microscope tell us, well, these are alive, these are dead. And then there is another technique where you will paint them. The ones that are alive will get yellow color and the ones that are dead won't. Wow. And then these other uh, machines that they have will show you. So depending how much color yellow you have, it's how many cells you have alive. This is what was interesting is the ones that had the, and these we're talking, obviously we're talking about malignant cells. So the bad cells will, wouldn't have any yellow color and the good cells we have would have the yellow color, right? So that's yeah, when that's we, cool. that's, that's where we saw is if, like bad cells will die, good cells stay alive. And we, and then they're still working on this. This is a project led by Dr. Yang Yang Sung. He's the director of the lab. Great, great so scientist. Yeah. Such a nice man. Yeah, he's amazing and really, really smart too. Came up with all these ideas and trying to work with all the Jing Tan herbal formulas from Doctor Shi. And this is what we're what they're finding. Hmm. It's so cool, so cool that Chi University is doing that kind of research. You know, just to help Western science understand that these herbs work and kind of how they work. So I know he's done some research too like testing immune cells 
not, I mean, obviously you're putting the herb right on cancer cells to see if it would kill them. And I remember knowing that there are four ingredients in Wei Chi Booster that inhibit tumor growth. But I also, I'm pretty sure you would probably know this, Dr. Shea's done some research showing that it increases the like immune modulation cells or the cells that fight diseases in our body or cancer or, you know, even like the common cold, that kind of thing. Correct. Yes, and then for that, then, it, then they are also doing that to see what specific uh, molecules are inhibited or activated but by the herbs, and then that's a lot of technical <laughs> terms that they use and procedures, right, to see if, again, the, the idea is the same. If it pops up yellow, if it pops up green, then, okay, the, the molecule is, is there. That's so cool. So the other thing that I saw you working on even more when I was teaching at Chi is that you helped Dr. Shea, and this is probably not much to talk about, but I thought it was fascinating that during COVID, Dr. Shea went back into acupuncture points, I think, and did a lot of research sort of honing in to make sure that the points that Chi University was teaching were were correct and that they hadn't drifted over the years of teaching. So he kind of went back in and tested and just did research and you helped him with that, right? You helped him. And was that mostly classical points or was that all the transpositional points? You did a lot of work with him, making sure that our points are correct. That was definitely a great experience for me because it helped me also review all the points, how I sure. learned them, how I thought they were, and then how they were they were actually where. And it was right. something that I also worked with John with Dr. Longwa here. And so it was it was great. We had to review all those three three hundred and more points and make sure that the description was correct, that we are updating them. We're keeping like, because obviously medicine changes, changes the terms and how we describe descriptions. So uh, anatomic descriptions. So we were working on that and working on getting the new, these handbooks that we give to the students, make sure that everything was updated. And that, and like you said, obviously you, we teach something and then over the years, well, we kind of shift a little bit from where it was originally. So we were trying to bring everyone back to where the point was. I mean, but like Dr. Shea said, we're, we're, if it has to go there, it will go there and it will make the effect too, right? Right. It was very great to be a part of Mariana and Dr. Shea and, and, and trying to figure out where these points are is because they have morphed over time. And I think the reason is Dr. Shea did so much extra work to try to make sure that for the listener, you know, we have transpositional points which come from the human and are transposed onto the, the horse. And we also have classical points which are unique to the horse. So what Dr. Shea did was, particularly in the transpositional points, he really looked at the anatomy of the human, anatomy of the horse, and fine-tuned these to be able to put and again, as a teacher, it's a little bit frustrating to teach someone something that they may have learned 10 years ago and say, well, that point has shifted. But that shift is for the good, because now we put the point that is in much more alignment where it should be in relationship to humans. Why don't you guys both, since you're doing it, talk a little bit about how acupuncture points are actually found where they're found in the human body. So my understanding is they're, they're around growth centers, like from when we're babies, embryologic growth centers, and they're points that have lots of mast cells or immune cells. Or they're, they're areas of huge nerves plugging in. I don't know if y'all can translate that into some lay terms, but it's really, I think it's really cool for people to know that scientifically, now we know acupuncture points are in very important places, and we can make even more sense of that anatomically. Yes, yeah, so there are, there are some, you know, these points are, are very biodynamically active. And like you said, they have a lot of mast cells, lymph, lymph cells. Certainly, there's fascial planes that come together in these areas. There are areas of electrical, high electrical conductivity and low electrical resistance. So they're, they're actually very, very dynamic points that we're using. And, you know, sometimes you say, well, you put a needle in and you get a reaction. Well, you're always going to get a little bit of reaction going through the skin. 
but there's a high number of, of nerve endings that exist in these foci of points that we're going into. So there may be a significant reaction from the animal because of the dynamics that we're going to into the tissue. Correct. And, and I believe, well, when I came to Chi, we were also working on these device to to measure the chi and me- and see the acupuncture still in progress this is going this is going to be a, a big project too that again it's led by Dr. Tsong but while I was there and and I believe we showed this research on the last conference uh, at Redick and the TCBN conference and we saw that there are depending on where you put the needle you would get a higher signal coming from the acupoint. And this is a machine that we're, they are working on right now too. And we found that something as petting and caressing and, and just and touching the horse could change that, that signal, could increase the signal. And we'll, we were doing more research and working more on that. We found that obviously these, these points specifically was really close, and this was the heart six and heart seven. So okay. these points were close to a nerve ending, right? But also we use a lot these points for anxiety and to calm the horses. So we found interesting that when we were doing, when we were petting the horse, the signal would activate more. So basically what we do with the needle is the same thing. We work directly on the point and then the horses relax. And That's when you one. were petting, when you were petting the horses to do that, you were petting them anywhere, or you were you were not petting them on the point, correct? Correct. We were doing it in a place that it wouldn't touch the needle at all, so it, the signal wouldn't get interrupted by that. So usually That's it was important. around the neck or the lumbar area. It kind of goes to show you how our bodies work sort of bioelectrically, right? I mean, when we are happy, our acupuncture points that would correct our bodies to be happy actually activate. So our happiness is going to activate those points. It's just amazing, honestly. If you could measure all the points all during the day, you know, for the listeners, anger in Chinese medicine is governed by the liver. So I would imagine that if you could do your bioelectric little measure thing and and make somebody angry, their liver points would probably react. I, it just what a cool thing to be able to test and what a cool instrument you guys are working on. Yeah, and you can actually see that out in the field if you have, in that particular case, a horse that is out of balance, perhaps a wood personality, and their liver is not in balance, maybe in excess, we can try to put some needles in points associated with that. And guess what? They don't like it, meaning that these points are active and they're sensitive and they're they're validating that this particular condition is showing up in the points that we would use. So cool. And so just to, to, to create a little bit of a diversion there, and I, I remember hearing earlier on, I don't think it was part of the recording, that, Allison, you were asked to maybe speak to some groups, vet students. I've been recently asked to speak to some two groups of campers, <clears throat> future super equestrians age 12 to 18. And, and I think as educators, as all three of us are, I think it's important that we reach out to the younger ones and the, and the older ones, the equestrians, the owners, and we provide information as we are in this podcast. Seemingly, there's several books that are great on acupressure. We're not trying to teach them to be quackery acupuncturists. We're teaching them that these points are sensitive. And if we can give them that information that here's maybe a point where you may want to try to activate with your fingers or pressure that you could actually be a part of the system and it just spreads the knowledge. And I know Mariana spoke that she's going to be presenting a paper at the symposium next week, as I am, regarding how we use that touchy scanny method to try to find out what area of the body may be out of imbalance or in pain originally with the idea that we're trying to expose this to conventional veterinarians. 
so that we can all be a part of that information that these channels and these points are important, whether you have a high degree of knowledge or a very limited degree of knowledge in TCVM medicine, they can all be part of us learning together on how we can create a better situation for the horse. Well, and that brings up a great segue into what Mariana did next. And I agree with you, John. I just, I think it's so cool because really we're here to try to help people understand how acupuncture and Chinese medicine and herbs and Twina and, you know, how do we use that with our horses, with our dogs, with ourselves? And Mariana, you were telling me a little bit about how cool it was to work on all of these sport horses in South Florida with Dr. Holland and how many, I, I heard you say before we got started, how many people came to you. It wasn't a question that you had to convince them to do acupuncture or spinal manipulation. You just, you did, they just came to you because they believed in it. I don't know if they'd, how many had probably plenty of them had had, had it done before, but it's really cool that the results speak for themselves in many holistic modalities because horses are honest and horses don't, you know, if they improve, they improve. And if they don't improve, they don't improve. We don't have as much of a placebo effect with those animals. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I mean, I was, I was in shock, honestly, when I started, it was such a great demand. Everybody was demanding to a point that they wanted acupuncture and spinal manipulation or also like the chiropractic work. That, that was great because, because yes, I didn't have to convince them that this worked. They already knew that this worked and they just wanted to help their horses. We're talking about high level competition horses and usually they're they're working every two weeks, they're showing every two weeks or showing three days in a row. So everything can happen from they, when they move from the farm at the tra- on the trailer to the show arena. And so we would have to go even to the, to the ground shows and work and do dry needle and things that, because these high level horses, there are a lot of things that you cannot do. They protect the, a lot of the animal welfare. And, but one of the things that you can do is spinal manipulation, body work like Twina, which is the Chinese massage. We would do that a lot too. And dry needle, the acupuncture. So all of these horses, because sometimes anything, anything can make them just a bad step or whatever. It can lead to a restriction and you don't want a horse with a restriction showing because then it's going to get worse. And these, the, all of these riders, they knew that. So they would call us and they would, and they, and, and we would work on these horses. And I had the pleasure to work with really, really good horses. Dr. Holland has a great practice. She's doing a great, great, great work on with all what it's integrative care for the, for these horses. That's so cool. Were there any, I, I think you also told us a little bit about working with, I think, some para-Olympics. Is that what you helped them with a little bit? To, uh, the, I was to working with, that. yes, I was working with the para-athlete. And, and it, it that was also really interesting because when we talk about integrative care, we're not only talking about all the modalities that we can use on the horse, but we're also talking about their horse environment and their rider. That's that's when we're doing the whole work, right? We're doing, sure. we're working. Okay, so, I mean, if the rider has any complication that's going to cause the horse to compensate, we also need to think ahead of that and see what treatments we can do to help. Because because we could inject the horse with PRP, but things like rider position or a saddle, right? We are not yeah. going to be able to fix. With do I mean we can do injections every three months, but we're not actually helping the horse. So this is a this was a really interesting case because at the beginning, these rider ha- had difficulties working on her right side, so a lot of restrictions came to, on that side of the horse too, and a lot of pain, neck pain, back pain, because of course the biomechanics of the rider and the horse wouldn't align. So instead of injecting, we decided to just work with electroacupuncture and adjustments every week. 
Again, when we're talking about the Wellington season, these horses are showing for three months and then they have to go. They go to their countries wow. or other parts of the state. So so it's really intense on the horses. And I think that's why all of these these riders, they, they know that, right? And and they want to do what's best for the horse because otherwise they, they, they can end up the season with no horse. The, especially when uh, the horse that I was working on, he was dressage. And dressage tends to put a lot of effort that, that it, 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 for, it, it makes the horses work a lot because of the certain positions that they have to have. And so sure. that's what they we need. need a lot of strength. Correct. Correct. And imagine if they have a restriction, if there's pain, then the muscles are not going to work properly, which mm -hmm. means that that's going to compensate some, somewhere else. And then lesion then there's the injury that we're trying to avoid and so yeah i mean working with these para athlete was was amazing because i could see once the horse was in great sh shape we were working on the core we were working on releasing all restrictions all type of pain then it was easier for her to to work on the horse because now we have a really good let, let's say like a really good base right the horse working as a a great base for her so she could sit there and do her work better and the horse could help her even more because again this is this we're working off a partnership here and that's why it's really important that we see these as like the whole not only the whole horse not only the injury of the neck because before it was okay let's focus on the neck no now we're working on the whole horse okay now we have to work also on the rider and where the horse is horses right the environment too and the compensation yes, of the rider yes. That's really important. And, you know, Mary and I had a Mariana and I had a brief conversation earlier about this Paralympic because I thought perhaps we were working on the same horse. It turned out not to be. But I had a similar situation that I started two years ago with a girl that was paralyzed at 11 with an infarct and could not use her left side at all from the shoulder down. And her horse had been reviewed by many, many horse veterinarians and could not come up with an understanding. So when I saw the, this horse walk, I had a pretty good understanding that we had a, a cervical problem. And we ended up and we went ahead and got the information from the University of Florida that there was some C5, C6, and even a little involvement of C7 with arthritis in the facets. So I said, let's treat for the treatable. We did over a year and a half, probably a dozen, 12, 14 different treatments. This horse kept getting better and better and better. And we did have a team. We had a team that worked with her balance, with the left side being off. We had a team working with the saddle. We had two trainers that were looking at her overall balance. We were treating the other aspects of the horse, not just the neck, because it's all connected and try to keep this one in balance. And he also went on, I don't know if he actually got to the Paralympics, but here was a situation that was close to being a euthanasia case to now being the most wonderful situation for this particular rider and horse as a unit. So those are, those are our rewards that, again, sometimes we can't get all that we need out of Western medicine. We can provide an awful lot. Yeah, that's really cool. So you two, those were two parallel cases, John? You got That yes. wasn't the same case? Okay. Not the cool. same case. No, this yeah. is a cult and he was not Canadian. <laughs> well, I, I think it's pretty fascinating. And I'm going to kind of reiterate what you said, Mariana, about, you know, you, I heard you say you were working on the horse's core and that sort of thing. And, you know, we, we think from a Western medicine perspective about, okay, we need to build core. Here are the exercises to do that. But the fun part about both spinal manipulation and acupuncture is that those modalities help the nerves plug into the core better. So when, what, what I don't know that we've gone over for a while in this podcast is that When we have these spinal restrictions, and I'm going to kind of define that as we were goofing off before the podcast, we talked about it. A restriction is when a bone's not moving very well. And, and if you picture the spine as like a zipper, it has little tiny roots that come out in between each bone. And when those bones aren't moving properly, then they tend to pinch or restrict the nerve roots, which actually restricts the nerve flow. And so 
you know, a nerve in the middle of the back for you, for the, the listeners can actually, it plugs into not only the back muscles, it's going to plug into the intestines. It's going to might plug into the diaphragm. It might plug into the kidneys. So it's like the electricity of the body is restricted. So if we can use our spinal manipulation to mobilize those spinal segments again and mobilize the back bones so that they can let the nerves flow again well, that is how we build core, right? You allow the nerves to actually plug into the muscles better so that you can build an electroacupuncture and all kinds of acupuncture energetically does very similar stuff. I think I, I loved neurology as a veterinarian when I was in vet school and I was thrilled to have my chiropractic training be very neurologically based, very neurologically based. And we just learn, I was kind of the guy who I worked for for a long time, did chiropractic, animal chiropractic. And he, he said that I, I just was kind of, anti-chiropractic. I, you know, grew up in that Western medicine family where you didn't speak to chiropractors, let alone go to them. And so when I went off to school, I was pretty skeptical, but learning how much spinal adjustment actually it supports the nervous system and the strength of our neuromuscular connections is just fascinating. So I think what I heard you both talk about was that in both of those cases, how much what we do from a holistic perspective supports building muscle and building core. And I would imagine with those para athletes, you know, they have restrictions and the horse has got to compensate for that. So the horse is allowed it, when we're continually putting them back in the right place, so to speak, you know, or make, helping all of their body be as mobile as it can, then it can function and be as strong as it can too. Yeah. And we, know? We we find a, a lot, you know, fortunately, as Mariana mentioned, and I know you, Allison, and myself, we we do have the fortune of working on some pretty high end performance athletes. Although my last case was a 20 year old Welsh pony who was having trouble breathing. So it doesn't matter to me who I go to. Right. But they, they, those type animals, they have every, every resource to be able to take advantage of someone maybe that has the discipline of acupuncture or TCBM medicine, plus the chiropractic and uh, Twain on all that. But oftentimes I'm, I'm faced with, listen, I have a physiotherapist, I have a chiropractic, I have a massage therapist, and I say, good, bring them all on. I will Absolutely. do my medicine, incorporate whatever we can do. We're all hopefully, if we know our disciplines are going to be complementary to the process. Absolutely. So, Mariana, most of what you saw in South Florida was sport horses. Did you see any other kind of internal medicine cases or was it just all kind of neuromuscular and rehab and all that sort of thing? I'm real curious to know. We interviewed Dr. Holland very early on in our podcasting. So that was about a year ago. But did you work directly with her? I'd love to know kind of how your life has been for the last year. What you've been up to? Yeah, yes, yes. I work. I work with her. I would see some spinal manipulation cases and do the electroacupuncture with her. We did see a lot of sports. Uh, we did a lot of sports medicine, and that's also what I've been trained the most. But I was amazed too, and this was also when working with Doctor Shea, how acupuncture could help with skin disease. And this was interesting because most of these horses, again, they don't live in Florida. They don't live in the beautiful, dumb, humid Florida weather. So when they get here, <laughs> their skin just go it just goes crazy, and they start having all these issues. So that was great to see with Doctor Shea and Doctor Hall and how. We could do herbal medicine, acupuncture, and completely clear all these really exacerbated uh, hives, for example. And in some cases, for sure, and then again, the whole idea is that we're doing integrative care. So some cases, these horses were the... the problems were re really, really bad. So we had to do some antibiotics or maybe steroids because again, these horses needed to show eventually we didn't have the time to wait until the herbs kicked in. So we had to do a little bit of that, but just a tiny bit of that. And then we would do aqua acupuncture, dry needle. And it was beautiful to see how these, how this skin would recover. So cool. 
when I, I did 20% dogs for the first nine years of my holistic practice. And I was amazed to see, I did, probably did less acupuncture, but I did maybe first visit acupuncture and man, the food therapy from Chinese medicine, which is obviously we got a lot more options in dogs than we do in horses, but food therapy is so strong and food therapy and herbal medicines can correct skin problems. And, you know, that's mind boggling and it's mind boggling to owners and it, it, created a situation where I had a lot of small animal vets in my area referring me their derm cases because, you know, the dogs got better without medication. We think in Western society that we, quote, get allergies, unquote, and we don't ever heal from them. And Chinese medicine just looks at that as an imbalance that's correctable. And that's cool. That's fun. Fun to make things better all the way from the inside out. I'm going to put a quick plug in I just for the listeners please go to curry on a stick, S-T-I-K dot com. We have designed several supportive things for these skin conditions in our Caraco line using a nano copper technology. I just wanted everybody to take a look at that. And as a support for the topical application and also gets underneath the skin, when I'm doing my acupuncture, when I'm doing my herbal, I urge them to use these and we have hundreds and hundreds of testimonials. So just a little adjunct to skin conditions in the horse, most, most helpful. Hmm. You know, it really is all about the flow of energy, right? So if the energy is not flowing well, then we, we, don't re, we don't remember often how much our hands help that flow. And the curry on the stick thing is going to just help that flow to the skin. Super Absolutely. Cool. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Mariana, it has been so nice to have you today. Super grateful that you'd coordinate your schedule from Peru. And I'm I'm really sorry to hear that you're moving back there, but I'm glad you're back to be in the land of all these potatoes, right? So, um, <laughs> so all the good food. <laughs> right. Well, when Mariana took me to the Peruvian restaurant, it was cute because she said she walked into the American supermarkets and she's like, y'all have white potatoes and sweet potatoes and that's it. And apparently in Peru, there's like 20 different potatoes. Is that right? 300. <laughs> what? Come 300. on. <laughs> 300 different potatoes. I've been eating potatoes every day now. I'm becoming one, I think, but I'm loving it. So are, they sweet, are, are they sweet potatoes or just regular potatoes or both? Both. Okay. Both. John, it's not just black and white. There's more options that we don't know about. Yeah, yeah. No, I've been eating sweet potatoes that they're growing locally here. So I'm all about that. Mm, it's great. Very cool. <laughs> Thank you so much for organizing it with us, Mariana, and sharing with us all of your experience at Chi and, and where you're going now, because it's just, we're all, all of us Chi graduates and Chi teachers and all are like little, little, I don't want to say tentacles because that kind of has a negative connotation, but we're little arms into the world of spreading some good energy. And it's awesome to know that you're in Peru. We have conference yes. next week for all you. Well, by the time this airs, the conference will be over. It's September 18 through 21 in Reddick, Florida. And that's when Dr. Shea collects lots of wonderful brains like John's and Mariana's to present the most recent And yours. And, yes. Yeah, I'm yours. doing something too. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I'm doing something too. Thank you. So. Yeah. No, thank you so much for having me here. It's been lovely to hear both of you and sharing these cases. It's It was a great experience and hope we can collect more experiences and more research for TCBM and the helping horses and all these pets too. Yeah. So what a great talk we had with Mariana. So grateful to have her on today. She is just a spectacular person, as are so many of our guests. If anyone out there is inspired by this podcast and wants to find a practitioner in their area, I recommend that the best way and the easiest way to start looking would be to go to tcvm.com, which is stands for Traditional Chinese Veterinary Medicine, but uh, T is in Tiger, C is in Charlie, V is in Victor, M is in Mary.com. And on that website, there is a spot where you can find a practitioner in your area. It will ask for your zip code and that lists people who have been through the Qi Institute training on some level. And some of them will be basic acupuncturists and some of them might have some Twina training and or herbal training and or food therapy. So, And that's under and, resources. Okay, very good. <laughs> Thank you. So anyway, tcvm.com. 
And John's down in Ocala, Florida. I guess you're, are you fully retired now, John? No, no, I'm not. I'm actually in St. Augustine and I come over and see some of my most favorite clients in the Gainesville, Ocala area. I have several clients that I'm seeing here in St. Augustine. So I kind of, yeah, so I kind of, yeah, but only because I just enjoy it so much to see the horse respond so well. It's just something that I don't want to give up just yet. (laughs) I really get it. It's, it becomes part of us. I think that Chinese medicine and spinal manipulation and myofascial release have, I think it's made me a better person. Um, yeah. And, so. I, and I'm, I'm excited because, you know, I've been doing this as a practitioner for 43 years. And now with this discipline, I got two phone calls. I have a, a, a particular mayor that is a multi-million dollar mayor that is coming down in three years barren. And they have asked me to oh, wow. take it on, you know, carte blanche, fully do we want a baby out of this mare, and I'm so excited that I think I, I am it. going to be able to create a baby. So that's, that's going to be a, <laughs> I love it. That's going to be a joy. <laughs> well, I am in Richmond, in the Richmond, Virginia area, and if anybody needs to find a practitioner in their area, going to the Chi University website is probably the best way. And John and I love coming to see you all once a month, and I do my usual quote for the day, and my quote for the day is by Ralph Waldo Emerson. Hopefully everybody who studied some English knows him. And he says, which I think is very pertinent in our, maybe our political climate and other climates. Let me never fall into the vulgar mistake of dreaming that I am persecuted when I am merely contradicted. Very good. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Tally ho.